Welcome to the Flood Risk Assessment GIS tutorial. This presentation provides details about what the Flood Risk Assessment dataset is and how it can be used to investigate and make informed decisions in community resilience. Most communities are familiar with using flood insurance rate maps or flood maps to guide sound floodplain management decisions. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, also created flood risk products to be used alongside regulatory products like firms. Flood risk products are non-regulatory, ready-made sources of additional information that go beyond the basic flood hazard information on the firm and provide more extensive and more user-friendly information. Flood risk products can help communities make better and more effective mitigation decisions. Flood risk products include the flood risk database, which stores the changes since last firm, water surface elevation grids, flood depth grids. It may also store the percent annual chance grid, percent 30 year chance grid, flood risk assessment, and areas of mitigation interest. A flood risk map and a flood risk report will often accompany the database. Flood risk assessment data provides an assessment of potential financial consequences and other impacts associated with structures located in high risk areas known as the special flood hazard areas. FEMA's HAZAS software generates these estimates of flood hazard related damage before a flood occurs. The HAZAS technical manual also provides additional information on the way flood risk assessment results are produced, methodologies, etc. This data also enables communities to make informed decisions regarding future land development and community infrastructure. Benefits of the risk assessment dataset include labeling areas of flood risk by census block, identifying potential losses and improve the ability to identify mitigation actions for hazard mitigation planning. For instance, areas with higher losses could require more stringent building code requirements and the use of flood resistant designs and construction materials. Examine the costs from disasters and provide return on investment estimates for protective mitigation measures. Encourage disaster recovery planning by showing areas of highest potential losses. In a hazard mitigation plan, Dollar loss estimates presented spatially can be used to improve the risk assessment and to select, evaluate, and prioritize mitigation measures. Communities are encouraged to pursue enhanced analysis where possible, internally or providing FEMA with additional GIS data such as parcel data, building footprints, or elevation certificates. The results of these flood risk assessments can be used in conjunction with the areas of mitigation interest data set to help communities prioritize mitigation opportunities and can be incorporated into hazard mitigation plans. A benefit cost analysis or BCA can be conducted for an individual structure or multiple structures using project specific flood hazard data and depth damage functions or DDF to estimate damages. FEMA provides recommendations in their library. The following tutorial outlines steps in ArcMap to perform simple spatial analysis using the flood risk assessment dataset. Each spatial layer in the flood risk database is described in detail by accessing FEMA's flood risk database technical references. This tutorial utilizes the following layers from the flood risk database. The SFRACAR shows the flood risk assessment results per census block. Here's a snapshot of what each attribute in the SFRACAR layer represents. Open ArcMap 
and used the Add Data button dropdown to add a simple base map layer to give the flood risk assessment dataset some spatial context. Use the Add Data function again and navigate to the flood risk database. Within the FRD spatial layers, select the SFRAC AR and click Add. Right-click the SBRAC AR and select Properties. Click the Symbology tab and change to Quantities. Select the Tote Loss 01 field as the value and update to an intuitive color scale. Please note that fields starting with TOT represent total building and content loss intersecting each census block. Fields starting with BL represent only building loss, and CL represent only content loss. The other percent chance flood risk loss results are represented as fields ending in 10.04.02 and 0 0.2. Zoom around the map to the bright colored areas using the magnifier and pan button. Bright colors shown here represent high estimated building and content loss in census blocks that intersect the 1% annual chance flood area. Use the Add Data function to add a local structure or building dataset. These may be available from the U.S. Census and local or state GIS departments. Use the Search function and type in Spatial Join. Then select the tool. Use the SFRAC AR as the target feature. Use the Structures as the Join feature and keep all other default entries. Right-click the resulting layer and select Open Attribute Table. The Join Count field shows the number of structures within each census block. The Tote Loss 01 field shows the total estimated building and content loss for that census block. Use search again to find the hotspot analysis tool. Use the spatial join layer as the input feature class. Use the join count as the input field. Name your output. Use fixed distance band as the recommended default conceptualization of spatial relationships. This type of analysis can answer the question, where are structures clustered spatially within each census block? Open the spatial join attribute table again. Use the table options to add a field named ratio, using double as the field type. Use the select by attributes button to select tote loss 01 values greater than zero. In the ratio field, right click and use field calculator to divide tote loss 01 by join count. Use the hotspot analysis tool again. Use the spatial join as the input feature class. Use ratio as the input field. Name your output and keep the default as fixed distance band. By creating a rate or ratio prior to the hotspot analysis, you can control for certain expected relationships. 
For example, the number of structures is a function of building and content loss and identify unexpected hot and cold spots. This type of analysis can answer the question, where are there unexpectedly high building and content loss given the number of structures? These areas can guide the prioritization of mitigation projects. GIS users may want to consider other spatial statistic methods. For more information on what each spatial analysis method produces as a result, in addition to how outputs should be read correctly, to make inferences are available at these sites. As previously mentioned, flood risk products were developed to be used alongside regulatory products like firms to help guide those tough conversations. Many of the flood risk products help stakeholders visualize their flood risks in a way that lines on the firm cannot, making flood risk products a powerful communication tool. The following provides more resources to learn more about flood risk products. Please use these web pages for printable flood risk product fact sheets, Colorado's resiliency plan throughout the state, FEMA specific resources, other uses for a base flood elevation, and what exactly is meant by the term 100 year flood. A geographic information system known as GIS is a powerful tool for visualization and data analysis. If you're interested in trying GIS, check out these resources. Once you have an ArcGIS platform, contact your community for a copy of the flood risk database and a flood risk product map package. For additional information, please contact representatives from the Colorado Water Conservation Board.